for what he's doing, the move of his spirit. And oh yes, it's a joy, amen, on a Friday night to be found here lifting up our voice and praising our God. Who is like unto him? I mean, there is none like him. He's Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. Come on, the lion from the tribe of Judah. The root of David, hallelujah, he's my peace, your joy. He's our king, amen. We rejoice tonight in this service as we worked our way down to this part, amen. All that's been said and done is he's worthy of it all. All the adoration and making a boast in our God, amen. And singing songs, he's worthy of it all, amen. And in that case, amen, let's go to the throne of grace in prayer. Father, we do thank you again together tonight for the service thus far and this opportunity now that we have to hear from you. We're praying, God, that you would stretch forth your hand even the more continue Continuing to lift up your people, oh God, everywhere to the heights that they have not been before, to the depths that they have not seen before. Keep on blessing the body of Christ. Look upon your people, oh my God, that are going through those, oh God, that's over in the Lord that seem to have grown weary, discouraging, oh, fighting the fight of bitterment. Lord, stretch out your miraculous hand. And help the saints, oh God, to be revived again. Strengthen their hearts and strengthen their minds, Lord, to the calling where we have called the church unto. We're praying that sinners might be saved. We're praying that the bound might go free. The brokenhearted might be healed. And those, God, that are poor, poor in spirit, might hear the gospel of good news. That they will come to know what you've done for one you can do for the other. So on tonight, use these lips of clay to speak only as thine oracle. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for him. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. Amen for the things he has done. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Again, we do rejoice tonight. Amen. For you that are out tonight. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For uh, Sister Ethel in her absence. Amen. Not being with us tonight. Amen. We're praying and believing that all is well. That God will be her strength. Amen. And we're sending portions of this service to her tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our God reigns and rules, amen. We thank God, amen, for, amen, my brother Sean, amen, and his wife, amen, that are not able to make it tonight, amen. We thank God that God going to be able to fix that Friday too. How about that? Amen. Praise God. God loves his people and there's not nothing he won't do. Amen. In behalf of us. Amen. So we thank God for that. We thank God for you that's in internet land. We thank God for, amen, the heart that he's given you. Amen. To tune in, to follow us. Amen. On the YouTube and on the Facebook. Amen. We thank God for his people everywhere. Amen. The love and the exhortation and the encouragement that you guys give to keep on keeping on, amen. Y'all just don't know how much that means. Although many we have not seen their face in person before, but all oh, your words of exhortation and your prayers we receive and we do feel them to keep doing this thing for the Lord in such a time as this. This is Zion time. Amen. To great forth. Amen. Like never before. Because the best is yet to come. If you come away with me tonight in your Bibles. Amen. We're going to turn. Amen. Tonight I want you to turn with me if you don't mind. Amen. Let's look at here. Oh bless his name. Thank God in the scripture tonight. I want to go over to 2nd Chronicles. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I want to say, I want to be in, as, I, as we were standing here tonight, amen, just in the praise and just seeing what God is, is doing among his people. Amen. Doing among his people. Amen. I believe it's in the 10th chapter I want to be in. We just, we just believe in going with the spirit yes, of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Being always ready. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I was, is the second I want to get this? It might be first Chronicles. Amen. The 10th or 11th chapter is where we want to be. Oh, bless.
us his name. Yes, in the 11th chapter. First. first Chronicles chapter 11. Amen is what we want to be tonight to speak unto you what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Praise God for such a time as this. God blessed us on this past uh, Sunday. Amen. To teach and preach that the hearts of men and women and his people would be encouraged to never give up. Don't give up on God. Amen. I mean, my God, God is up to something here. Praise the Lord. These are the days of strength. It's not the time to be tired. It's not the time to get woe out. This is not the time, amen, to lose your inspiration. This is the time, amen, to rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. And you don't have to wait for the manifestation to be glad. Amen. When you realize who God is, and you understand all power is in his hand. And if he made one, amen, and if he made one or did it for one, then he also can do it for you. Amen. Praise God. I mean, Zion can just get that part, amen, and grab home to that. It, then, amen, envy, strife, jealousy, the things that, amen, come to make havoc many times, amen, definitely in the house of God, amen, which is the very thing that run rampant out there in the lives amongst men and women that don't know God, amen, praise God, because they are some dangerous spirits, amen, that come to destroy. And as always, amen, we seek to make men and women to know as we stand before you under the mission, amen, and the command of God, amen, to preach and to make you to know a defeated devil and a great big God. Yes. Amen. That in spite of how it looked, when you understand all power yes. is yet in his hand. Yes. Amen. When you get it on that line, then you realize, amen, if you may be on the outside, you may be in the clink, you may be bound, you may be hurting, amen. There is a God that you cry out, that you can cry out to. And if you cry out unto him from the depth of your soul, yes. He hears the cry of that poor man and he runs in not to destroy you, not to beat you down. No, no, that's not who he is. But he comes to help you, encourage you, strengthen you in spite of whatever may have taken place. Amen. He can give you new beginnings. So when we're getting that on tonight, the Lord would have me to say these words to you on tonight. Amen. Praise God uh, that we might understand because oftentimes we heard many messages as many things have been declared unto us. And amen. We walk away thinking about that individual. Amen. That done the mighty act. That individual. Amen. That got to that place. And we miss the message, amen, because within the message, he's always the message. Oh, yes, he is, amen. The goal is to keep him the main thing, amen. After we get through telling you all about it, amen, we're praying that your eyes will see him in the conclusion of the matter, amen, because he's more than able to do for you what you heard of him doing for someone else. And on that note tonight, Sister Tony, if you don't mind reading for me tonight, Amen. And I want you to begin at the 10th verse of First Chronicles, the 11th chapter. Amen. Because these are the days that God is doing a thing among the body of Christ. Amen. There's been a whole bunch of trouble, a whole bunch of wind. There's been a whole bunch of storms that have taken place. Amen. And through it all, God got way of bringing forth that that he has prepared for such a time as this. And my God, when the curtains go up and that carousel stop, amen, it might not look like what you was accustomed to looking, but I mean, you're going to see the power of God, amen, and come to know him like never before. So on tonight, we have an assignment, amen, to share with you tonight uh, that might, amen, mighty, if we would say something tonight, it will be mighty, but only because of God. Yes. Mighty, but only because of God. Amen. That's going to free us up. You're going to understand that God has taken man of like passion, 
like you and I. I mean men and women that know what it is to hurt, bleed, and I mean know what it is to go through some things. Amen. But once he get a hold to them and, and they get a hold to him, he can develop them to become a vessel that he can use to be a terror to the devil. Read for me tonight in 1 Chronicles 11, chapter, verse 10. What do the Bible say? These also are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, mm -hmm. who strengthened themselves with him in his kingdom. Oh, my. And with all Israel to make him king according to the word of the Lord concerning Israel. Uh-huh. And this is the number of mighty men whom David had. Joashbeam mm -hmm. and Hickamanite. He was a Hatchamanite. The chief of the captains. He lifted up his spear against 300 slain by him at one time. Now I want you to note now, amen, that as we read through this, and I'm going to let her read through this, on each one of them I'm going to underscore some things. Amen. So this one man, amen, one man, Amen. We're going to read and, to, and preach tonight how God used one man that was chief among the captains. Amen. Uh, chief of the captains. He lifted up his spear against 300 slain by him at one time. Amen. I mean, if anybody has ever been in a real fight of men, you've been involved in something, fighting will take strength out of you. But the Bible talks about this man took on 300. Amen. And they weren't fighting like many of us have been in fights and knuckle fights, fist fights. These fights was unto death. Amen. And he slew, the Bible said, at one time, 300. Read on. And after him was Eleazar. The son of Dodo, the uh -huh. Amorite, who was one of the three mighties. Look at here. He was with David at Pisidium, and there the Philistines were gathered together to battle. Uh -huh. Where was a parcel of ground full of barley, and the people fled from before the Philistines. Yes. And they set themselves in the midst of that parcel and delivered it, and slew the Philistines. And the Lord saved them by a great deliverance. Now look at here. And the Lord saved them. So Eleazar was another one. Amen. So, so far we've dealt with, amen, Jehoshaphat. Amen, the Hachimanite. And now we're dealing with Eleazar. And here go another unusual, seem like act or strength. Amen. That was not of man, but it was of God. Amen. I want you to be encouraged tonight because sometimes, amen, right over in the army of the Lord, right over in the body of Christ, those whom God, amen, has put his hand upon. Amen. My God, that God has used and worked through mightily in hours such as this. Amen. My God, it's time to be encouraged and inspired because sometimes, amen, we get to going and you, you, you just get distracted and you forget it's really not a about you, the strength that's been exhibited, it comes from God. Amen. And what has happened, my God, in the midst of Zion, we're finding out in so many places, amen, because we got beside ourselves, high on the hall, not understanding, amen, look here, we want to keep longing for him, amen, like we long from the beginning, amen, keep going after him, like we went after him after, from the beginning, that thing was to continue along, no matter how many victories you more. Amen. It's for you always to remember you're nothing without the Lord. Somebody say amen. That the strength that these two that we're reading about that was exhibited, I would have you to know tonight, amen, that it was not their own. I would have you to know tonight it wasn't nobody but the Lord. These things are, are not even humanly possible. Amen. But I come to let you know tonight, amen, with God all things are possible. And this fight that we're fighting, they were fighting a fight, amen, in the day they had enemies. And what we do today, the church is still in a bit in the midst of fighting the good fight of faith. And what we are up against, amen, is not flesh and blood, but we're going up against rulers of darkness. I mean spiritual wickedness. We, we are going up against demonic spirits, amen, 
that we are in a time where it seemed like Zion got at ease. And now, amen, we don't really recognize what we're combating against. And some of these messages that were lullaby and they thought they was teaching and they just told you you're going up against yourself. Your greatest enemy is you. And I mean, come on. I, I mean, after a while, we're going to have to get up and wake up from quit seeing these stars and realize what the Bible said because the chief apostle Paul, he told us, uh -uh, we have an adversary, the devil. Amen. That goes about seeking whom he may destroy. If you notice, he didn't say, amen, you have an adversary yourself. You have an adversary, which is you. He lifted the people of God mind, so in the spiritual realm that they might understand what they up against and that they might know who's on their side. Somebody say amen. amen. Sister Tony, amen. I just wanted to drop that in there. Keep reading on because this is inspiring me because what God is doing right in the midst up upon this rock right in the midst of house of prayer home this church and if he's doing it for us I know he's doing it for somewhere else too because this pandemic amen seemed to be the house has been cleaned out we don't have them want to run in and come and assemble like they used to but don't you get this marriage man of God because God will assemble and put together a team of people that's going to do it for him not the crowd that's going to do it for him amen not for the position that's going to do it for him amen Amen. And fall in love with him. And he's going to use them, show them great and wonderful things. And reveal himself to them that he might use them for his glory. So there is a shifting, a realignment. Amen. That all, oh, yes, it is. And God is doing this thing by his spirit. The enemy meant it for evil, but God know how to turn it around and make it for his good. Somebody say amen. amen. And it's good to know if you still got fire in your belly. And you're still inspired to go for God And you're going to love him in spite of I've come to tell you tonight You have been included Somebody say amen Read on for me sister Tony Read on, read on Now three of the thirty captains went down to the rock to David Uh oh Into the cave of Agulon Three of the thirty And the host of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephim Uh huh And David was then in the hole And the Philistines garrisoned was then at Bethlehem. Yes. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of water of the well of the of Bethlehem that is at the gate. Now let me let me let me share this. Let me give you, let me take you into this. Here it is, amen. They got 30, amen, and David is in a hard spot. Seem like he's in a clink, amen. Seem like he's surrounded it. And this thing had went on for some time, amen. And David here, amen, in the cave of Adelon, and the host of the Philistine, the Bible said, encamped in the valley of Rephaim. And I want to let you know, amen, that's why we got to learn how to praise him in the valley. Because although you might be in the valley, you got to know you got one that sit way high, amen. And he need to let men and no men and women know that although you in the valley, I am a lily in the valley. Amen. I mean, I'm one that you can look up to no matter what spot that you're in. And David them got in that valley and what they didn't do was give up. Amen. They didn't throw the towel in. They made their mind up. I'm going to fight to the death. Amen. I mean to God, amen, we're going to hold on and hold on strong. Although the enemy, I'm sure, thought he had them hemmed up and they thought, ah, this is it. We got David and he's an unusual man. Amen. But not our God sat on the throne the whole time and let that thing get such a way that when he showed up, amen, that all eyes might see his power and his wondrous work. And you need to take that tonight, no matter what your issue is, your circumstance you facing, whatever that bondage, sickness, ailment may be, whatever that wind, that storm may be coming against you, you got to know that God sits right there. Amen. Amen. Watching you, amen, day by day, hour by hour. And it's his design will that you don't give up, but just draw now unto him. Look, the church don't give up, we just look up. And what David did, amen, because he was surrounded with some men that knew God, surrounded with some men, amen, that God.
God had given strength to surround it with some people that got to know their God. See, these are the day and hour, amen. Many have spent a long time around Zion, around the church building, and they had not really got to know who God is. Oh, they got to know each other. They got to know how many kids this one had. They got to know this person's son and daughter. They got to know what this one liked to eat. They got to know this is that one's favorite restaurant. They got to know all that type of stuff, but they failed to realize that they were supposed to be getting to know God. And what the church got to come into, these are the days of personal relationships. Because these men that we're reading about, don't you think was some magical hocus pocus? That they got like the way they got these men, amen, developed relationships and got to know their God. And God from above gave them unusual strength. And I want you to know, amen, if you've been called out of darkness, if he's chosen you to be a son and a daughter of God, because of him being great, that's what makes you great. Amen, because great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And God has included you, hey, without him you can't not do it. Without him you cannot be unusual. Without him you can't demonstrate this type of power. But brother with him you can do all things through yeah. Christ. Yeah. You got to know you're going to make it because he's the one that makes the way. You got to know you're going to make it if you got to look back in time past and say Lord you've been there. You've helped me before. I mean my back was up against the wall and I didn't know which way it was going to come but you came right on time and the time of me being able to suffer need. I mean, come on, many of us have been in that hour that we realized, my God, we needed him, oh Lord. And my God, we called out, we called out. And we got to the point to say, Lord, I mean, if you don't come now, may not be no need after a while. Amen. Because it seemed like it was long duration. But what we failed to realize that God was preparing you, making you, amen, for that that was to come. And these days are upon us. Amen. When David began to go forth, and here it is, it's captioning the mighty man of David. And what God would have us to see tonight as we reading about the miraculous power that was demonstrated to man, amen, that surrendered their lives to God, that gave God their everything, amen, that developed a relationship with him, amen, he want us to realize, look here, don't get caught up in them, look and know it was me, amen, because their might came from me, amen, their success came from me, amen, it's for the church to look unto Jesus, who is the author the finisher of our faith is not a man for us to look no other place but him. My, thank my God, the clergy, what we ought to do is put the attention upon Jesus. We get men and women look unto Jesus. It's him that adds to your spiritual stature. It's him that grows you on a daily basis. He knows how to watch over you and look over his word. He's watching to see if you're going to keep it. He's watching to see if you're going to go to singing Zion songs in the midst of your storms in the midst of adversity will you praise the Lord I mean don't you throw the towel in don't you get like what's the use of it because brother what you do for Christ it adds up because it gives God amen the glory and he prepares you for where he got you on your way to somebody say amen, amen. so here it is David and them they're in this hole amen and when they in this hole the Philistines time gashing. Amen. Was there in Beth Bethlehem. And the Bible said David alone. Now note now David was a king. He was the one amen that God joined these people to him. And David was in the midst of all of this battle. And he said oh I long for a drink. And I just don't want to drink. I want to drink water of the well of Bethlehem. That is at the gate. Just, I just don't want no any water. I want the water from where the land that God has given us. And that's what it's going to take in times like these. You got to want to get to the place where with he called you unto. 
We've been telling men and women, and we're letting you know constantly, you got saved, but your being saved was with purpose. He called you out and delivered you. It wasn't for you to just jump up, stop right there, and think, oh, I got everything. Remember, he told you you should be glad because salvation is the beginning of great things but what he told Israel amen I got something for you on the other side I got a land to give you that I want you to live in because you're not here to live in this wilderness but it's for you to get through it and learn and know I am your God I am the one that will fight for you I am the one that will provide for you I am the one that will meet your needs I just need you to learn how to praise me amen Amen. As Sister Anderson was talking tonight, and she's right, and it's true. Amen. When you begin to grow, you're growing up from baby ways when you stop murmuring and complaining. Amen. Ah, oh, yeah. When you grow up, you understand how to put your words together. Yeah. Amen. You don't go up in there, amen, talking about, uh, 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 uh. you know how to talk to grandma, talk to mama. Amen. You know how to start Hallelujah. talking. It's something about growth that brings changes. And that's why I'm convinced that God, is seeking to deal with his church yeah. and a matter of it's time to grow up yeah. and I mean grow up not sprout up not somebody trying to jump up but I'm talking about God is taking those that's been through the torches of the dam he's taking those that's been in abusive situations he's taking those that have been spiritually abused those that have been broken down and broken hearted that have went through I mean test after test but they have refused to give up but they still called on God and found out he was there and in that manner amen he's going to develop and walk with him now what David had when he began to moan for this water there was those of the captain and in that company that heard the king and they said man he want water then let's go get him some water hey my 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 God I mean he want water from the from the error that we're here to conquer and take. Amen. Look here. I don't care what's going on. Then let's go do it. God showed me something here because this David was the natural king. But you and I that are saved, we got a spiritual king. Amen. And he has designed some things from us. And you got to say, you know what? Whatever it takes, if I got to put my life in jeopardy, if I mean my God, whatever I got to go through to do it to please him, when I look back over my life and realize if it had not been for him, amen, if it had not been for him being that sacrifice, if it had not been for him keep going on when he could have stopped, I mean, after judgment hall to judgment hall, he still didn't stop, and then he got on the cross, amen, and he still didn't stop, and they ridiculed him, they ostracized him, they sat right there and tried to make light of him, but my God, the love that he had for me and you, and the joy, amen, of seeing me and you get saved. When you got a king like that and you understand what he desire, you say, for God I live and for God I die. If you want water, then I'm going to get water. I want y'all to listen at this. Read on, yes. sister. Tony, look at what happened. Woo. My God. And the three break through the host of the Philistines uh -huh. and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem. So three got together because they heard the request and the desire of the king and said, we're going to get over there and give him some water. They broke through. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It's time to break through. I want to let this sit right there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Break through. Break through what? Break through that that's been impeding you. Break through fear. Break through. Amen. I mean, break through these demonic spirits. Break through, amen, that infirmity. Break through that bad attitude. Break through, amen, that rebellious spirit. It's time to break through where the enemy don't want you getting to. You got to roll up your sleeve and say, look, Lord, I humble myself. Under the mighty hand that the mighty hand would rest again upon me because I can't do it without you. But these men, amen, was in tune with God. And they sat right there and got together and said, let's go get it. They didn't tell David they were going to go get it. They got together and said, let's go get this water because the king 
want to drink. And if the king want to drink, then you know what? His wish is our command. And that's how the church should be. I mean, my God, you want to see souls saved. You want to see folks delivered. You want to see men and women come in. Then, Lord, then here it is. That's my desire and mine will. Let thine will be done. Use me for your glory. Amen. Grow me. Build me. Take me higher. Take me deeper. Amen. I mean that you can use me like never before. I want you to look at this because this is interesting. Here it is. Amen. As they broke through the host of the Philistines. The Bible says they drew water out of the well of Bethlehem. Have you read this yet? That was by the gate and took it uh -huh. and brought it to David. Yes. But David would not drink of it. Look at this. But poured it out to the Lord. David would not drink of it, but poured it out. Read verse 19. And said, my God forbid it me that I should do this thing. Look at my God. Shall I drink the blood of these men that have put their lives in jeopardy? Saints, we got to put it in jeopardy. Come on. Come on For God. with the jeopardy of their lives, they brought it. Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these three mightiest. Look at this. Here it is. They go in, they break through, they heard the king say, I long for a drink. I want the drink of that that's over in Bethlehem. They put their lives in jeopardy and broke through that. Amen. And went in there, I can imagine, amen, when they broke through there on them enemies, them enemies probably looked at them like, whoa, what is this? They done broke through here and they trying to get a drink. And I can imagine they probably looked at them and said, nine, one of y'all better not move. And they were getting that water for the king and they got up out of there. Amen. And took that water back to David and says David, amen, was a man of God. Amen, that had developed in his relationship with his God. And because of his walk with God, he grew. He grew in a spiritual relationship as well as the natural, but David grew up in his relationship. Amen, and God walked with him and David walked with God. And here it is, David is sitting there as king, realizing these men put their Life in jeopardy. Why could he do that? Because he remembered I put mine in jeopardy. For my God, David realized these men, they weren't fighting for his desire. They was fighting for what God wanted Israel to have. And although he was the king, he was the one that was sitting up high. He was the one that said, I'm going to stoop down the lowest. Because when they brought that water back, he said, I can't do this thing. Because we in wartime, if I can, if they can't drink, I don't want to drink. And I believe when he pulled that water out right before them soldiers, brother strength came from everywhere. They realized my God that was being able to humble and be meek. And I mean to tell you, that's how you lead. God showed me many, many years ago, amen, and before we got to this point, he put down him and he said, look at here, don't rise no higher than the master's feet. You always realize and maintain who you doing what you're doing unto and no you haven't got to that spot overnight you got to realize you ain't always been there what are you saying D David knew it he knew amen that look at I ain't always been king I ain't always had no army I ain't always had all my bearers I ain't always had man God did this thing but David amen refused to lose sight of who God is and what God had done and I want you to know tonight that God is watching Zion he's watching those he is the seeking and the Zion amen for the church to draw now because my God, he wants some Eleazar's. He want to use some Abinos, some Adonos. He want to get to some Shammah's. Because if God showed a new, unnatural and supernatural strength in them man, I got to tell you today that same strength that came from God can rain down on you and I. Somebody say amen. But it takes getting to know him. It takes getting to, I mean, walking with him and growing with him. I mean, surrendering thine will, realizing, Lord, you've been good to me. These men was committed first to God. And many times people get in ministry and they try to commit themselves to the man without committing themselves to God. But God is going to raise up the type of leader. He's going to raise up a type of leader to let you know, amen, uh-uh, I'm going to put 
you on God, not me. I want to build you up upon the rock. I want you to get to know that God that brought you out. I want you to get to know that God that when you was in your sin, he was there having mercy. When the hand of the enemy was there to devour you and destroy you. Amen. I mean, he stayed the hand of the enemy. He want to bring you to an enlightenment that you might know your God and be strong and do exploits. These men got to know God. And I mean to tell you, it wasn't custom. It wasn't religion. They got to know, but they got to know the God of Abraham. They got to know the God of Isaac. And they got to know the God of Jacob because their king got to know him. He recognized, I mean, they, y'all, if I got to know him, y'all got to get to know him. And he encouraged them. And so when David poured out this water right before them, he would not drink it. Right in the midst of these mighty, I guarantee you it was an inspiration. Yeah. Because he had the heart to think about them. Right now. now, if God had the heart to think about you and I before we were brought into Christ, yeah, yeah. you know these men that's in position, we are to think about what belongs to God. Uh-huh. And that is the sheep of his pasture. I can see why God was always like this according to David. A man after my own heart. Everything he do, he do in a way of coming after me. He do with all his heart. He always realized he was nothing before I came. Uh-huh. What we're not privy to read that's not written, when David was on the backside tending to the sheep, we came to know when he ran into the valley uh, where they was fighting the Philistines. And he began to testify, we began to realize and hear of him fighting bears and him fighting lions. I mean, the brothers and his daddy didn't know, but he walked with God and God knew and David knew that God supplied David with an unusual ability to make it out alive and to render what he was going out to to render. And my God, if he would put his life on the line for something that God created in the facet of an animal, amen, God's masterpiece, God knew, my God, if I can put him over, amen, and get him, amen, to be an example to my people, he will think about them also. Yeah. Somebody said, well, why are you bringing out like that? What happened in the lives of the church when we're living saved and we're not thinking about others? Something's wrong. Come on, Come on. Amen. A kingdom of priests or all priesthood. Uh -huh. One whose God has given power to. Oh, yes, you got it. Amen. Because to many as received him, to them gave he power. Amen. But what we set ourselves up to do, like we see so many in the religious world, amen, they said high on the hall, wanting to be served. Like God told Samuel to tell the people, amen, they're not serving the people, but the people was going to serve him. Brother, these are the days and hour that God is going to loose the people. Amen. Up from under the taskmasters of the pharaohs of the world, of those spiritual Simons, of those, amen, abusive, yeah. abusive powers, and going to deliver them smack dive in the power of God. And they're going to be delivered from legalism. They're going to be delivered, amen, from ruts. And God is going to break up his power and bring them out and show forth his strength in their lives. Somebody say amen. Yeah. And when they come out, amen, they're going to come out all dizzy and they ain't going to believe in what God has set up. Amen. They're just going to be free because God going to place them somewhere where somebody is going to put them on Jesus. They're not going to preach and produce an organization but they're going to preach Jesus. I mean they're not going to preach themselves but they're going to preach the Savior. And what men and women are going to do, they're going to fall in love with him and they're going to come to know how he came all the way down from heaven. And my God, he gave his life a ransom. And it wasn't your grandpa, it wasn't your bishop, it wasn't the priest, it wasn't that prophet, it wasn't that pope. It was Jesus who was God in the flesh that came down, amen, and rendered Satan powerless. This same God that came down, he paid the price and became.
became propitiation for man. He became the substitute that we, me, and you before he came had no power, had no strength. We were dead in our sins, but because he did the redemptive act, he died and was preached. We received it, and you have he quickened. He brought to life, and we're not going to never forget what he's done for you. And that thing alone would motivate you. That thing alone would help you while you're getting made, while you're going through. Amen. Being able to be base, being able to suffer need. It looks like, my God, all right, we're in here with the lions, but God, I know you're here. I mean, all right, we're going through the Red Sea, but Lord, we realize you're still with us. I mean, my God, look like we're in the furnace, but my God, we understand you can take the heat out. We just want you to get the glory that all men will come to know there's nobody like you. These things tonight I'm preaching to you because you got to realize these mighty men and you should read this book and get inspired. But this might they had was only because of God. You got to realize these mighty men, God gave them this unusual ability. God gave them this strength. And you need to realize when you get in Christ and begin to mature, that same unusual strength, that same ability. I mean, my God is within you. And many times it takes seasons to grow. We we need the summer. We need the winter. We need the spring. Look, it, it takes seasons. It's things you've got to go through. Amen. We're going to go through the tortures of the dam. I was told many years ago when I was a babe, but the Lord put something down in me to want him. I would read the scriptures and I'd say, now God, you're the same God. You're the same God that used these men and you healed. God gave me to realize they weren't the healer, but he was the healer. God yeah. gave me to realize, yeah, they were the one that were used to do the exploit, but without God, they couldn't have did it. And I remember I had an auntie that the Lord, amen, gave her to speak to me and say, look what you're going after, amen, it comes with suffering. It comes with going through. And even as a babe, I said, well, if it's suffering and going through, then I believe he can take me through. That did not discourage me, amen, from putting my eye on the prize. And my God not many have. Many I sat right there and said, oh man, it's a whole lot of suffering, but don't you know when you suffer, the king that reigns go through with you? Amen. Yeah. Look at him. You ain't in that thing to do it in your own strength. He give you strength to get through that. And he will manifest his power that you might know it wasn't by your might. It wasn't by your intelligence. It wasn't by your ability. It was by the Lord himself that I brought you this far. So I just want to encourage you tonight. Might, amen, it's only, it comes from God. And when you're mighty, that means you're possessing great or impressive power or strength. Amen. And we got to understand who is the might. It is God that who is the might. He is the one that fortifies us. He is the one that gives us the strength. It was God that gave these men, these men that would take parts of ground and draw the line. Didn't make no difference how many it was. Their eyes was upon God to help them. And since they fought for him, then God fought that battle in them. And my God, I'm persuaded, yes, in 2022. I mean, no matter how the devil has come on strong, no matter how it looked like you might be outnumbered, when you got to realize something here, if God be for you, he's more than the whole world against you. Having God is not all you have. He's all you need. And what do you mean, my God? Because many are getting ready to roll down walks. They're in fiery furnaces. They're in testing time. And I need you to not look over to the left. Don't look to the right. Look unto the hill from which cometh your help. And know your help coming from the Lord. Don't look at it like, well, you know what? Somebody else tried and they failed. No, you look to God because there ain't no failing in him. Maybe somebody took their eyes off and they went down. But brother, sister, that ain't got to be you. You. you walk on and let the glory of the Lord fill your life. You let him use you for your glory because might comes from God. I want you to see this tonight as we brought out these and we're touching and reading on these men. They developed, God developed within them. They had relationship with the same God that David got to know. 
God didn't join anything to David, amen, that didn't want the same thing he wanted and what he got to know. Yeah. These unusual mighty men, God revealed himself to them. Yeah. And I'm believing and I'm watching it right among us that my God, his people, because they're longing and going for him, He's doing a quick work. Somebody might be listening to this and say, well, man, they ain't going through nothing. Uh -uh, don't you go there. Anytime God is growing and blessing the people, all they're going through. they just going through looking to Jesus. You know, sometimes in Zion, if you don't watch yourself, you'll think you're the only one going through. Well, I would have you to know anybody that set out to see God, anybody that set out to develop a relationship with God. The enemy is coming in not to bless you. He's coming in to try to destroy you. Amen. I mean, he don't like nothing that you do. And it's high time for Israel, the people of God, to realize uh, just because the devil come in, you shouldn't put your head down. But you got to realize greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And that God is banking on you to retain uh, and hold on to everything he's ever done. And know that even in this hour, he is my deliverer. He is my joy. He is my peace. That something arise up in you that you will fight the enemy. That you will tell that devil, uh-uh, it don't end right here. Amen. It don't end right here. In the Lord, I live. In the Lord, I move. And in the Lord, I have my being. Now, I'm devil, you can't have peace. God gave me peace. And he didn't give it to me like the world gave it. What he gave me, the world can't give. You don't have nothing to offer for me because I don't want nothing from you. All I want is from my father. We got to realign how we look at this thing and understand it's a privilege to be in the army of the Lord because when I look at this, I'm seeing soldiers. I'm seeing soldiers that God had. David wasn't only soldier, he was surrounded by soldiers. Amen. That would fight my God. Do you imagine, man? They had one man that fought so long. Amen. That his, his hand, it claved unto his sword. I mean, it locked in. I mean, see, that's what we need. If we're going to be on the army field in Bangalore, I've been over here 30 years. But have you been fighting or have you been standing behind the rock? Have you, have you been fighting or uh, have you been watching somebody else do it? Amen. Because at the end of the day when you've been fighting, I mean in fighting in the army of the Lord, you mount up with strength. And God himself revealed himself and you come to know God is not a man, he should lie. And there's nothing that has ever defeated him. And as long as we stay in God, you shall be more than a conqueror. You might, you will understand that even when you're back is him then that he's your way out yes. that he's your help he's your strength yes. if Paul had to recognize it we are gonna get in some predicaments that you gonna have to come to know it but Paul found out his grace his strength was sufficient it was made perfect in weakness when the devil told him you can't make it Paul Paul suffered the need and said Lord I need you but God said right there and said you got me you got to realize I'm with you're more than a conqueror and that thing hit Paul and he taught the church he didn't tell the church to bow to tell and run he said fight a good fight of faith I mean we got power to cast down we got power amen and our power is superior to the powers of the enemy when the enemy shows you all his damnation look to God and no God is able he's able to save your son he's able to save your daughter He's able to heal your body. He's able to help your mama. I mean, my God, don't you never give up hope. He is our hope. We can lean on him in a weary land. And that's why we're here tonight to put before you, I mean, I don't know. Whatever your warfare may be in, I'm here on this time to let you know might comes from above. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Fight a good fight. It's time to be a devil chaser. It's time, I got for you to wear the devil out. Don't let him wear you out. You wear him out. Put him on the run. Tell him where to go. Put him up under your feet and give the glory to God. Somebody say amen. amen. 
Hallelujah. When we look at this and I'm closing. Amen. It was Pastor Paul over there. Over there in Philippians, the fourth chapter. Real quick, Sister Tony, why that's coming to me. Amen. Philippians chapter four. This was a man of God that went through and suffered tremendously slow. Amen. Not just from the infidels, but those that were religious. He fought a good fight. My God. He went in the uh, uh, instructions and the obedience of God, of his calling and his mission. He suffered some things and went through some things. But Paul didn't get weaker. He waxed stronger and stronger. I mean, I found out when you're really fighting God and start growing, you get stronger and yeah. stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Better and better. Yeah. Now, you don't diminish. We increase. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, we walk Hallelujah. in the divine, divine, the divine command. We be fruitful. We multiply. Right. I mean, my God, he puts it all within our lives because it's him that do it. We don't do it ourselves, but he do it. When we look to him and we say, look, Lord, I'm not casting confidence away. Uh, you brought me thus far. You've been with me through this. You've been with me through that. God just want to see all right now, son, I made myself known to you. Let me see how you're going to behave in this one here. Let me see if you're going to sit right there and complain or take a double thought. Or you're going to sit right there and say, wait a minute. Mm -mm. I choose rather to go with God, to suffer with the people of God, than to go back into the pleasures of sin. Mm -mm. I turn that down. I counsel that curse, Satan. Uh -uh. I rebuke you. I rebuke every yeah. discouraging spirit you bring my way. And I walk in the joy yeah. of the Lord because oh, yeah. he gave me power to prevail. Yeah. You got to remember, amen, whatever you're facing because I deal with a lot of people many times. They write, even on the church Facebook site, saying, pray for me. I'm going through this in my body. I'm going through that and I let them know your Savior, amen, suffered stripes for you. He had you in mind. It wasn't just those that we read about in the Gospels that received miracles of healing. Uh, he had the, for the joy that was set before him. He saw you being healed every time he took a stripe. I mean, who have believed our report and whom have the arm of the Lord been revealed to? You take that word and hold it. I mean, when they pronounce it and they speak it, look at here. Thank you, Doc, for what you said, but I'm going to read see what God has spoken concerning me because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and this too amen shall pass I come to tell you it's only a test just hold on strong and fight the good fight of faith what do we say over there sister Tony over there where I had to go to amen read for me over there real quick so I can be done Which verse did you want? amen Philippians 4 and 12 Philippians 4 and 12. Hallelujah. This is going to be Paul letting us know what he learned. Because when you start talking about something you come to know, uh -huh. that means you learn. Uh -huh. I want you all to understand we got the description of all them brothers that we saw unusual working mighty power of God. They learned some things. They developed. They were made strong. They were strong and stronger. God manifested his power in their lives and they knew it. It wasn't they owned. Because if it had not been for the Lord, they would have been trampled. They would have got destroyed. But because, amen, he is who he is, he kept giving and his people the victory and that's what I'm going to preach I'm going to preach unto you the victory if you don't give up if you hang in there look at victory belongs to you amen victory belongs to you don't give in don't give up hope don't cast away your confidence there is a reward that comes from heaven Philippians chapter 4 verse 12 how do it read I know both how to be a base uh -huh. and I know how to abide yes Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, uh -huh. both to abound and to suffer need. Wait, wait, wait. I know how to suffer need. The Lord gave me in meditation with this. I know how to suffer need. When you're in a situation of need, you need help now. You wanted to come then. But 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 Paul said, I learned how to suffer the need. In my waiting on it, what I'm needing to come to pass. I've learned how to magnify him. I learned how to be thankful.
faithful unto him. I learned how to girdle in my tongue. I learned how to give him praise before I murmur. I learned how to not soak. I learned how to say, Lord, I thank you anyway. You've been good to me. Don't y'all don't y'all know, amen, when we read the book of Acts, it was Paul and Silas. My God that preached the word of God, obeyed God, the commandments of God. Here comes the enemy that cast in prison, have suffered many stripes, beat back open flesh. Amen. And my God, they two got together. And because they had relationship with God, they didn't get up in there and say, man, I don't know if this is worth it. I mean, man, this right here, for, for this? No, no, no. They was in there with the men that didn't know God. And they got to singing, praying, and singing prayers. All right, all right. Look, Paul said, I know how to suffer need. Uh -huh. I know, I know, yeah, we want them to come in. And most times we as believe we want them to come in before that trouble and that pain come. But Man. God said, look here, now you need to know I built you to take it. Uh -huh. You need to understand I'm making you to go through it. Uh -huh. Amen. You need to understand I want to make you and prepare you because I'm going to put a it. table before you in the presence of your enemies. Uh -huh. I ain't got to just knock your enemies out because I can do that too. But I want to prepare a table that they might see I'm God. They not God. That they might understand I'm God and I am in your Man. life. Man. So Paul said these things. I know how to suffer need. And it's time for the church to understand. You got to learn how to praise them. You got to learn how to give them the glory right in the face of adversity. Right in the face when it seems like there's troops all around you. Know that God can give you power to run through troops and to leap over walls. Read on for me. I can do all things through Christ. Yes. Which strengtheneth me. He strengtheneth me. I'm not going in my own strength. These brothers was not in their own strength. All right. right now. They were all in right. the strength of God. Whoa, whoa. So when I look on Zion, mm -hmm. I don't care where you come from. Yeah. I don't care what you was bound to. I don't care what right. God right. delivered right. you from. I'm seeing someone, amen, that has breakthrough power. Right. Breakthrough ability. Right. I'm seeing someone that got strength that supersedes their strength. Yeah. Because when I see a man and come to know it was the hand of God that brought you out, that saved yeah. you, that changed yeah. your life. Yeah. Great is he yeah. that's in you than he is in the world. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to pastor you. I'm here, amen, to set right. flame to the fire that may have burned out. As an evangelist to let you know, come on here and suit up in God. Amen. And understand, amen, you got to fight a good fight and to put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That evil day that we come in, God want that to be a day to show forth his glory. Yeah. The enemy think he got you. But you got to realize that you receive this tonight. It ain't over. All right. You got to know it's only a test. Lord, I'm going to look to you with praise. I'm going to praise you more now yes. than I've ever done in my yes. life. I'm going to give you praise more than I ever have praised Hallelujah. you. Because I realize that the enemy is coming on strong like this. Yes. All y'all think David wanted that water from Be over there in Bethlehem. At the gate, my God, it got to be greater things on the other side of this battle. I encourage you. Fight. Don't give up. Keep believing. Keep hoping. Thou in God. I pray God surround you with believers. I didn't say church folks. With believers that has the spirit of God abiding in them. Those that will not judge you but encourage you. Those, amen, that would realize the greatness that's in you and support that, that you might get over it and beyond it. Come on here, stand on your feet tonight. Give God a great big hand praise as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that would hear this message. Those that's out there in the internet land that's really going through it. Oh, my God, many not understanding what it's all about, but make them to know you up to something. That, Lord, in this hour, it is a time for them to get to know you.
that they find themselves not murmuring or complaining, retreating or backing up, but continually drawing nigh to thee, never being double-minded and being unstable, but being single-hearted, realizing if it had not been for you, they wouldn't be what they are today. Yeah. I pray, God, that the vision of the church be inspired to love you like never before. That there will be such a development, oh God, in the body of Christ. That those that's been called to the fivefold and those that's been on for long duration will grow up into maturity to be a help in Zion, to be a help in the places you called them to be. Oh God, let every armor bearer that's out there, let every evangelist that's out there, every pastor, preacher, the prophet bishop that's out there oh let this hit the sanctum of their soul that they're being carried yeah. to look to thee in the name of Jesus the making them Jesus. to know they are what they are only because of you I speak against arrogance and the spirits of distraction. I bind the spirit of abuse that have come in in the body of Christ that have paralyzed many and caused them to behold the wrong thing. Many, oh God, is bound by what they see because they don't see you. But God deliver them. If that means up, oh, get you out of that place, lead them to where they need to go. If that means set them a flame again to help that local body, then for your glory and do it for your people. You've always done great and wonderful things for your people. Then let it be so today that Zion will arise and prevail. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Be strengthened and go with might in Jesus' name. Come on, let's fill it with some praise real quick. You go with God and he will go with you.